Hello and welcome to We Random episode 84. We are recording live Tuesday, June 28th, 2022. This is a podcast where we talk about some random stuff and B over there is going to give us a little bit more information on that. And normally I start this with uh, with a joke. That's generally how I start these podcasts. And B, I know a lot of good jokes about umbrellas, but uh, they usually go over people's heads. That's right. We'll be right back after this. Almost Qualified Productions. Let's get crazy! Experts don't have this much fun. Welcome to We Random, episode 84. I'm Landmark. That's Gonzi. Say hello to the people, Sconzi. Hey, what's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? You can't trust a blind man to multitask, but I did it. So now we can get started. So this is the We Random Podcast, where we have our wonderful Wheel of Doom. What we're going to do in just a quick minute here is we are going to let that wheel spin. The topic that comes up, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about another one and another one and another one until we decide it's time to move to random rankings. But before we do that, we have a few items of housekeeping. One, we always want to check in with Skanzi to see if there's any words of wisdom that aren't from Mr. Rhythm. And then number two, we got to give you our positive point. So Skanzi, I yield the floor to you. Tell us how you're doing and tell us if you got any words of wisdom that were not brought to us by Mr. Rhythm today. You know, we're going to have to bring back Mr. Rhythm. I, I need to get a Mr. Rhythm Jeff up over the chat. That's what we need. I'm gonna have to work on that. <laughs> rhythm Jeff. Yeah, but uh, but no, I don't. I don't have anything good. I think we're gonna jump straight into positive point. All right. So that is my cue or my theme music, so to speak, because we are moving into the positive point. And today we are talking about civil rights activist Opa Lee, who is known as the grandmother of Juneteenth. So Opal has one piece of advice on how to celebrate the Juneteenth holiday, and that piece of advice is to help someone else. So Opal is known as the grandmother of Juneteenth as her granddaughter, Dion Sims, is the founding executive director of the National Juneteenth Museum. When encouraging people to celebrate Juneteenth by helping others, Lee says, I find that when I help somebody else, all of my problems seem to disappear. I don't want you to think that they just go into thin air, but whenever I'm helping somebody else, I get help for myself. So I thought that that was a very positive way to start the podcast because I think that's really something that's good to keep in mind that if you're putting yourself out there and doing things for somebody else, like even though you're not looking for that self-benefit, sometimes that self-benefit is there for you too. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good message because I feel like we are, especially in today's day and age, uh, we, we really live in a me society or maybe maybe a better way to look at it is an anti you society, right? Like like everybody has a bone to pick with everybody else and people are abusing that in, in all sorts of different ways. And and I think that it's important that we that we remember that we're all here together. And uh, when you have the opportunity to help someone else, I think it's important that you do that. I agree. So now that we've gotten our positive point taken care of for today. Sconzi, what do you say? Could we give this wonderful wheel a spin and see what happens? Let's do it. All right, the wheel says, oh, we're, we're gonna start off with this one right off the bat. So all right, well, be Wade, be. so to be fair, so that you all know, we have been trying to take a more positive spin to the podcast. I told Sconzi I was not going to add this to the wheel. Sconzi slapped me and said, you're going to put this on the wheel. I'm going to take you like Will Smith. So it's <laughs> on here. So 
The U.S. Supreme Court ruled that there is no constitutional right to abortion in a case called Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization. In reaching that decision, the conservative majority court has overturned Roe versus Wade from 1973. As a result of the reversal, states will now be permitted to ban or severely restrict abortion. 26 states are expected to do so immediately or as soon as they can, making abortion illegal across most of the South and Midwest. In these states, people who can become pregnant will need to either travel hundreds of miles to reach an abortion provider or self-manage abortions at home through medications or other means. So, Skanzi, we already kind of had this conversation this weekend, but where do you want to start with this? Because obviously for us as two men, like, like we, we can't necessarily speak from the female side of this, right? But we can speak from the side of people who care about others in our lives. So what do you got on this one? Well, I mean, I know we've been trying to keep things positive. So, I mean, the positive side of it is I'm a guy, so I don't care. It doesn't bother me any. I mean, clearly that's not true. I mean, I am a guy, but the rest of that's not true. You know, I mean, there's, there's so, there's so much to this. Um, I think the, like the obvious story is the fact that it's, it's a, it's a effectively a ban on abortion, right? Like the Supreme Court is, is doing the whole, uh, what is, what is that Neil deGrasse Tyson meme, right? Like, eh, it's not, it's not us. We didn't do it. No, but you knew that half the country was going to ban it the second that you did this, right? So yeah, you, you did this. Um, but there, there's a bigger, there's a bigger concern. Uh, and, and I know that's hard to say because the abortion issue is, is enormous, but we've also got a Supreme court that just very recently shot down, um, very light gun protection legislation that was in New York just today. They shot down voting rights, um, in Alabama, no, Louisiana. Um, where Louisiana Republicans redrew a bunch of districts so that a, a state that is roughly one third African American will, the African Americans basically impact one of six districts. So they're redistricting the, the African Americans so that they don't impact, I shouldn't say that, the black people, so that they don't impact the actual state elections. And the Supreme Court upheld that. So we've got a Supreme Court that is run by a bunch of right-wing nut jobs, and they are pushing a bunch of really horrible right-wing agenda stuff through. And it's almost like they just don't give a shit, right? We've got, we've got a number of uh, Supreme Court justices who stood up during their confirmation under oath and said, nope, Roe v. Wade is precedent. We can't touch that. And now they just overturned it, right? We've got a standing... Uh, fucking U.S. Supreme Court justice whose wife ha- helped uh, try to do this whole January 6th insurrection thing and he doesn't even recuse himself from voting on the freaking things that impact that. Like, it is so goddamn corrupt, the Supreme Court. It's disgusting. And yes, I'm getting off track from abortion because it is enormous. It is huge. It's disgusting. But my bigger concern is what's going to happen next because yes, abortion is enormous, but this is just the first and a whole bunch of dominoes that are going to fall. No, I mean, I think that's fair. And that's one of the things that I was going to talk about, because one of the things that we've had off stream conversations about is, you know, what is our solution focused approach to some of these topics, right? And my solution focused approach to this topic is for people to wake up and to understand that the politicians that they are voting into office are not as a whole doing what their specific, um, you know, constituents want, you know, we're talking about abortion. We're talking about gun control. We're talking about a lot of these things where if we look at these polls and these research studies and these things that say, you know, X percentage of people want this, the court is just doing whatever they want. They're basically trying to run backwards to figure out if they can get back to exactly how things were in 1776 when the constitution was made or if they can get back to zero bc when the bible was created like that's honestly what's happening here and that is not what the majority of people who these individuals have elected want and that goes on all sides i'm not calling out just one side i'm calling out 
all sides in that statement, right? And I think that is a big problem. And that's one thing that really frustrated me about all of this because, yes, now, you know, women's health is going to be severely impacted. And what are people doing? They're sending out emails to fundraise, right? You are in Dude. power in office right now and you're like, oh, I need your money. No, you needed to actually do something about this when you had one month, two months, three months, however many months years. to try to do something about this and you did nothing. Like they, They've that's... had years. They've had fucking years. And Nancy Pelosi and Joe fucking Biden come out and what? what's their reaction? You need to vote. Motherfucker, we voted for you. You are in the spot that you're at, making all that money that you're making in with the position of power that you have because we fucking voted for you. So do your fucking job, huh? Like, this is horseshit. The fact that their response is you need to vote. We've been voting for you for years. We have known for years that the Republicans want to get rid of Roe v. Wade. And you have not done a fucking thing to stop it. So don't give me this, you need to vote, or you need to give me $6, or any of that horse shit. Do your fucking job, people. And, and, right. and it's just, like, you, there's so many pieces to this. But the simple fact of the matter is there are women who are going to fucking die because of this. It's that simple. Well, it's, and who's going to be impacted? That's the other part. You know, the mistress of any of these senators or any of these people on the Supreme Court, that person's not going to be impacted because they have the money and the power and the will to make sure that their women's health needs are taken care of. It's going to be someone who doesn't have money, who doesn't have stature, who doesn't have support, who is going to ultimately be impacted. Yeah, for sure. It's not and the average everyday person, you know, like it's just and it's going to it's going to disproportionately impact people of color, right? And people who are poor because these mm -hmm. are the women who aren't going to have the means to be able to trans, you know, uh travel four states over to get an abortion when when they need one because you know, the, they live in Ala fucking Bama or something. Like, it's just mm -hmm. the, the, the fact that this is happening is abysmal. It's taking us back to the 1950s. And this is just the start, man. They're going to they're gonna push gay marriage. They're going to try to get rid of that. There, there's so many different things. I mean, fucking Clarence Thomas already came out and said these are the next things in the chopping block. This, this court is out of their fucking mind. And the fact that we're not doing anything about it, it just it irritates me to no end. Like we are we are we're we're seeing the collapse of our democracy. That's right. what we're watching. Well, that, Not to be over dramatic, well, but that's what we're seeing right now. Well, and that's the whole thing with like, and I'm gonna like really sidetrack us now, and I'll quickly try to get us back on the track. But that's the same thing with the whole January 6th thing. Like they're doing all of these hearings and all of these hearings, and you hear all of the stuff, and you're like, I'm not surprised by this, but what's gonna happen? Not a damn thing. Right. So right. we're seeing the ugly underbelly of our politicians and no one is doing anything about it. And then, you know, what's going to happen in November. People are going to vote for these same Republicans because they're like, oh, my God, I have to pay four dollars and ninety five cents at the gas pump. Like this is just like I, I am just so tired of it and i don't know what else there is to do but that's my takeaway is that we as a people need to start holding our politicians accountable because across the board they are not doing the things that we put them in office to do they are there lining their own pockets making their own alliances and basically insulating themselves so that the rich stay rich and the poor basically always stay the poor Yeah, no, that's absolutely it. Also, my camera keeps fucking freezing, so. So. Let's move on because I'm just going to lose my fucking shit over everything else going on right now. So. Moral of the story, this is a bunch that. of horse shit. Uh, let's yep. talk about Title IX. Okay, so we're going to talk about Title IX, which that's not real exciting either, but we're going to talk, oh my God, my screen just went kaboom. So, please wait. <laughs> <laughs> As you all can see, I have a dark reader on my screen. So every once in a while, my screen goes, <laughs> and it doesn't work. So we are going to talk about the same guy who's not doing his job in other areas, 
but he said he wants to do something here. President Joe Biden wants to extend the protections of Title IX, a law which prohibits schools that get federal funds from discriminating on the basis of sex, to transgender students, compelling schools to accommodate and protect them. This includes permitting them to use bathrooms that align with their gender identity, using their correct pronouns, and addressing bullying based on gender identity. Biden's proposal would amend the rules that govern how schools, colleges, and universities investigate and resolve claims of sexual assault and sexual harassment. Now, one thing that I am not clear on, and you know, I work in higher education, does this apply to K-12 or is this only like college level universities? I thought Title IX was only college level. But I don't okay, know for because certain. That was my thought. Like, if this is one of those situations where we can look at the glass half full or the glass half empty. The glass half full approach is, hey, you're doing something. That's cool. The glass half empty approach is, if you're going after colleges, you're preaching to the choir at that point, right? Like, this is something that we need in K-12, considering all of the stuff that's going on in K-12 right now. So, sure, it's good that we want to make colleges and universities more inclusive, but then you're also fighting against the tide of states like Florida and what they're doing and some of the other states that are trying to now legislate what colleges can and can't do. What What are your thoughts on this one and what kind of inspired you to add this one to our list of topics, Gansi? Uh So I did, do, I did look it up and this applies to every school, every public school. So it applies everywhere. Um, I, you know, after we just got done talking about how Joe fucking Biden hasn't done a goddamn thing since he's been voted into office. At least there's something moving in the right direction, right? To try to offer some sort of protection uh, for trans individuals specifically in uh, in education. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this actually makes its way through, if it actually gets applied. Um, especially in the climate that we're in right now, where anybody that's not basically a cishet person is is getting hated on and specifically cishet white person, specifically cishet white man, uh, you're, you're basically getting the shaft. So uh, this is a good thing to try to push through, but you know what? Let's be honest, and this is this is pessimistic Sconzi here. Let's say he gets this pushed through somehow and makes it happen. Like who's to say that somebody doesn't sue about this and in a week and a half it's in front of the Supreme Court and they just shut it down anyway. Like, I, I don't have any faith that anything's going to stand up. But, you know, what? at least at least he's trying to do something besides just, you know, make no sense in front of a microphone. Yeah, the, I'm going to tell you my terrible joke that's going to get me canceled. So there were people who were talking about the January 6th thing. And I was like, yeah, just you wait. The Supreme Court will come out with their 6-3 decision that it's their First Amendment right to overthrow the government and nothing can happen to them. So, like, back to your point, right? Yeah. The court is basically kind of tilted to be able to taper down any of these positive momentum things right now, and that's kind of frustrating. Yeah, it's, it's frightening as fuck because these aren't just small things. This isn't just like, no, the Atlanta Falcons cannot relocate to South Carolina. This is like, no, you cannot get an abortion that would save your life and instead you have to die. This is like, no, it's okay if you beat up a gay person because they're gay. Like this is, this is next level severe shit. And uh, like for years, the world has looked at us and laughed at us. Now I think they're looking at us and they're feeling sorry for us in a lot of ways because they see the way that these these right-wing religious fundamentalists are just taking over this country and turning us into the, you know, it's not even the 1950s. They're trying to turn us into the 1800s, right? Like they want to bring back fucking burning witches at the stake or the cross or burning them wherever the fuck they burn them. And uh, they're not too far away from it. I mean, so to kind of bring us back on topic, I think that if something like this gets passed through, like, I feel like it would be helpful to kind of, again, um, stabilize the tide of things. Now, there's a lot of infrastructure stuff that would have to happen in terms of, like, um, unisex bathrooms or things like that. Because if you think about a lot of these places, they are not equipped to handle 
people like me who need um, accessibility accommodations? How are they going to accommodate this bathroom that's been there since 1950? You know what I mean? Like, right, right. They're like, it, it's, there's a lot of work to be done, but I think that it's important work and it's good that at least it's on somebody's radar. That's, that's the positive spin that I have on this one. Yeah. The other thing that's really worth calling out is that a lot of these other, um, the things that he wants to do here is shift the way that colleges and universities are required to handle complaints of sexual assault and sexual harassment. So this is going to, it's, it's kind of pushing more of that narrative of believe the person who is, you know, bringing that claim forward. And we know that sexual assault and sexual harassment runs rampant in this country, uh, and, and especially in, in education and in colleges. And so many people get by, if it even gets brought forward, first of all, and if it does get brought forward, they get a slap on the wrist at best. So I don't know. It just, it, it seems like, uh, that's, that's another big positive step on this. Sounds good. Well, let's spin and see if we can get a happy topic. All right, I'm spinning. All right. Uh, are we happy about the New York Public Library? I think we probably are. I am. I'm happy about this. This is a good story. At New York Public Libraries this summer, kids and teens will get to participate in a giveaway of one half million books. Locations in the Bronx, Manhattan, or Staten Island will have an array of new paperback books featuring characters who reflect the rich multicultural diversity of New York City. Each book will come with a specifically designed NYPL book plate to stick in the book that says a gift from the library to you. The library says that this is the summer of lifelong love of reading and your own home collection in the library can begin with choosing your first book. So I thought that this was kind of cool because one of the things that is really important to some people is reading and being able to cultivate your imagination, cultivate your communication skills, reading skills, and for the library to give away this volume of books, especially, again, I don't know this for sure, but it sounds like they're specifically targeting some communities that may not have as much money and opportunity to get access to these kind of things. So I thought that this was a really good story. Yeah, no, I agree. I think this is great. Um, I think that the, the more that we can get people into reading, the better. I think that the more we get people into reading, the more that we allow them to let their minds expand, the more that we, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, my camera froze. It looked like I'm about to sneeze. That's hilarious. Um, the more that we open their minds to new ideas and new thoughts, and uh, hopefully the more that we can get them to a point where they are a rational free thinker, which is incredibly important in, in for all the reasons that we've already just spoken about today. Yeah, yeah, and I think that there's a second part to this of you're providing kids and parents and teens an opportunity to go somewhere in the summer months where they can spend time and they can, you know, be in a good space where, you know, we've talked a lot about these kids here in Milwaukee who are out here stealing catalytic converters, like, Go to the library instead of stealing a catalytic converter, man. Fucking do anything. Like, jump off a bridge instead of stealing a catalytic converter, as far as I'm fucking concerned. I'm spinning the wheel. <laughs> fucking catalytic converter thief, bitches. Jumping right. off a bridge is not sponsored by We Random. Unless you're going to steal a catalytic converter, but then it's sponsored by me, motherfuckers. All right, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about the story that's going to make our Chicago brethren very happy. I'm, I'm calling you out, Jeff, because I know you'll be listening to this at some point this week. He's going to like this? Uh, no, he's going to hate the hell out of it. But that's why I oh, wanted okay. to call him out. That Got you. Okay, so French's, known for its iconic tomato ketchup, has unveiled the most questionable of summer treats. It's called the French Sickle, and it is a ketchup-flavored ice pop. The ice pop was available at various Canadian pop-ups last week. I did not do my due diligence, almost qualified, to figure out what people thought about this. But as soon as I saw this, I needed to add it to our sheet. So, Sconzi, what do you, loyal Wisconsinite, think of a popsicle that is flavored like ketchup? Dude, you know what? There are a lot of great ideas in the world like primo top of the line why the hell didn't this 
come around sooner ideas. And this absolutely is not one of them. Who the fuck wants to catch a popsicle? Are you kidding me? Old man Wiggum, please note in the thing that we use here, we'll just use the technical term, the run sheet, that that will be our drop for the week. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I saw this and I was like, no. Like, so here's the thing about this. Okay. So cold ketchup from the refrigerator. Delicious. However, it typically is put with some type of like starch or meat, right? Yeah, so you're yeah, yeah. eating ketchup with potatoes. You're eating ketchup with a burger. You're eating ketchup uh -huh. with whatever. But like by itself as an ice pop, I don't know about that. I don't, I'm not, I got, I got to pump the brakes on that one. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I just, I don't even know what to say, man. Like ketchup with my fries. Hell yes. Ketchup on my burger. Damn right. Ketchup on my hot dog. That's right, Chicago. I put ketchup on my hot dog. Ketchup, hey, hey. ketchup popsicle? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say no. In fact, yeah. I feel so strongly, I almost want to hit the button. But Go I can't, ahead. considering everything else we talked about, I can't give ketchup the dick of the week. That's just, that's too little. But you got to give it the, this is the, the, the that I've heard <laughs> on the internet before. This one right here. That was one of the stupidest <laughs> things that I've ever seen anybody post on the internet before. Do, do, do. That's true. It absolutely is that. It absolutely is that. <laughs> All right. Well, we say no to ketchup popsicles. Chat, let us know what you think. Ketchup yeah. popsicle, yay or nay? The answer is no, but you know, well, we're going to spin this one more time because we've got a lengthy random rankings. And frankly, I could use something a little bit more uplifting to talk about. But let's talk about Microsoft. This is pretty good. Okay. I was going to say, did you, I was going to ask if you wanted me to give you my uh, challenge flag before we do that. But we're going to talk about Microsoft. All right. Microsoft has announced new employment policies. The biggest change is Microsoft will begin divulging salary ranges for open positions. Microsoft is also doing away with non-compete clauses. U.S. employees will not be restricted by a non-compete clause in seeking employment with another company who may be considered a competitor. This will not apply to those senior leadership positions, which uh, <laughs> senior leaders not do it. What, what can, can we have these people go to Washington anyway? Also, Microsoft is also ceasing non-disclosure agreements and bringing in a third party to conduct an overall audit of their workplace policy. So basically Microsoft is doing everything that our federal government is not. So what are your thoughts about this, Conzi? You know, we talked about Microsoft a week or two ago and that they were doing some things that were moving in the right direction. I think this is great stuff. Like, don't anybody be fooled, right? Like, this benefits Microsoft in one way or another, right? They're not just going to do this because it's out of their the goodness of their heart. But these are all things that could very well entice people to come work for them, which is what they're trying to do, right? Like, if you don't have to worry about a, a non-compete non clause, right, which a lot of times could be, hey, you can't go work at a competitor for a year or for a year and a half or whatever the case may be. Um, the fact they're paying, like, I am so hung up on the salary thing. Like, it is absolutely stupid that you have to apply for a position for a job and you have no idea what it pays. And so many of these businesses are all, well, don't you want to work for, you know, for the good of it? Fuck no, I work because I need to get paid, man. I work because I got a mortgage, I got utilities, I got a car payment. Like, that's why I work. I don't work because it's fun. So tell me how much I'm going to get paid because I'll tell you what. If I apply for your job and I go through 17 interviews and then you sent me down to talk about the fucking pay and you're telling me you're going to pay me half of what I'm making now, I am going to be fucking pissed. Don't waste my goddamn time. Tell me how much you want to pay. And you know what? If your salary is less than what I want to make, I'm not going to apply. It saves us both time, right? Like, I'm not going to accept it anyway, so why waste both of our time? Don't do it. Like, it's just, it's fucking asinine that this isn't a thing. So, good on Microsoft for doing that. Although, I think that they have to because there's a new law in Washington that says they have to do that. Right. But still, good, good yeah. on Washington then for pushing that through. And you know what? This is a surprising thing. If, if Washington is forced to do that, that may, must mean it's some kind of law, which means their politicians actually fucking did something. Take note, Joe Biden. Right. Well, Sorry, I had, to, I had to go I, back. 
It's fine. I like, I, I like one of the things that really grinds my gears is salary ranges. Cause they're like, this position has a salary range of $29,999 right, right. to 999. Like how is the salary range going to be $70,000 different? What is it that I'm doing that puts me in the bottom 10% of the salary range versus this other person who's at the top of the salary range? Is there really something that I'm doing so wrong or so different that makes the difference between $70,000? Like, I feel like so many of these salary ranges are just artificial and it frustrates me. But yes, I think it is good that folks are required to post this because as you said, I started looking at jobs. I don't care if you people at work hear me, you know why I'm staying. No, don't, don't, don't do nothing. But you know, you look at like, Oh, well, I'm going to pay you $30,000. I'm like, no, no, you not. <laughs> so I think this is good. Yeah, no, it's definitely a good thing for sure. All right. So you want to throw a flag. So why don't you throw your flag and then uh, we will, uh, and then we'll move then we'll do our thing. I, I thought about throwing a flag. Let me, yeah, we'll do, I'll, I'll save this other one for my extra book. But let's throw this flag on Milwaukee style and substance. Because again, here's a politician doing something. So, yeah. yeah. Milwaukee leaders are hoping to empower barbers and stylists known for having an open ear and gaining the trust of their clients with the tools needed to prevent violence. This new effort is aimed at training employees to steer their customers away from violence and to share accurate information with them. Leaders are proposing training the barbers and stylists on resources to help customers resolve disputes, make referrals to counseling, or connect individuals to resources to address food or housing insecurity. So when I saw this, I thought that this was a really neat idea. This is an initiative coming out of the Milwaukee Mayor Cavalier Johnson's office. So they want to connect with some of the barbers and stylists in the what people consider the inner city of Milwaukee, help to train those folks up on some of these resources. So then as their clients are coming in and telling their stories of like whatever it is that they're doing so that they know the questions to ask, they know the resources to connect people with, they know the opportunities opportunities to help these folks seek out help before they might know that they need it or want it. And I think that this is really neat because there is a very special bond between a individual and their barber or stylist, right? So sure. you might go to the barber shop and, you know, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but in the black community, the barbershop is a thing. Like the barbershop is a place where you go to hang out. You talk with your barber, you talk with your friends. Like this is an open environment. But if you can get somebody in there with some training and some skills to kind of push a conversation in a direction, I feel like that's helpful. What are your thoughts, Gonzi? I'm going to try to talk without moving my face at all. We'll see if I can do this. I bet we yeah. can because my camera's frozen again. <laughs> anyway, I agree. I agree with what you're saying. I think that this is this is an area where um, where we have people in the community who are very. I'm, I'm struggling with words right now, but these individuals are well placed in a in an area where they are privy to a lot of conversations, and I think in a way. They are, they're kind of given an elevated status in a way. Like, I think that, 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 and, and I'm not part of the black community, community in any way, shape or form. Um, but I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of comfort there. There's a lot of conversation that happens. And I think that it puts them in a, uh, <laughs> it puts them in a position where they're able to hear things and identify things that may be happening and it also puts them in a position where they can potentially guide individuals if they want to do that so i think this is a great idea i think it's any time that we can get people of influence to buy into assisting influencing people i think it's a good thing and i think that goes anywhere where there are people of influence it would be fantastic so yeah this is great i love this yeah, so that I wanted to call that out because I feel like that's a good topic to end on. But now, Sconzi, yeah, are you ready? I'm ready. What are we ready for? We Brand are ready for rankings. I jumped the gun. So, 
in the interests of time and hunger and doing things that we like to do. Do you know what we're going to do today, Sconzi? I bet we're going to talk about food. We sure are, and we're going to do a bracket. We're going to talk about the best sandwich in each U.S. state, and it's going to be a bracket. So, chat, get ready, because you are the tie-breaking vote. So, how this goes is we've got a bracket. We're going to compare these sandwiches. If Skanzi and I agree, that sandwich moves on. If Skanzi and I disagree, Old Man Wiggum gets to choose the sandwich that neither <laughs> of us would want. And then, if Emily is there, or Z-Dubs, or any of our other loyal uh, listeners and viewers, you can cast your vote for which sandwich you want to move on. That's right. All right, I'm going to pull so, this bracket out of here, because I don't know where that worried about that so yep. we're gonna move that here and then i need to i like pissed off i'm just very contemplative i think is the word all right here we go so we've got a lot of sandwiches to go through we will see if we make it through all of them i would like to because i think this is a fun thing but first right. we have to start with hawaii right, did you want to read these off me i can try if you I tell can, me i can where read them I'm off going. Hawaii is Kalua pork, pit okay. smoked pork, falls apart and joins tangy cabbage slaw and an optional ring of grilled pineapple on a Hawaiian bun. I don't really what? care what New Mexico has. It's going to lose. Like it's, I won't it's read done. New Mexico. So that's kind of what we're going to do. Like you tell me one and then I'll get one and you get the other one. So I get to read you the loser of oh, God, New Mexico. God, this sounds Mexico. good too. So let's. Come on, New Mexico. Where are you? Hold on. I, ah, I feel like my article just refreshed. So give me just one moment to. This is this this shouldn't be a first round number one matchup. All right. So we got New Mexico has the green chili cheeseburger. Green chili is synonymous with New Mexican cuisine. So much so that the pepper is called New Mexico's green chili. So it's no surprise that you'll find it topping burgers all along the state. So, we've got pork or green chilies on a burger. Are you going to change your mind, Skonzi, or are you sticking with the Kahlua? No, I'm going with Hawaii. All right, Hawaii. So, what state am I looking up next while you read one? Oh, I'm trying to figure out how I can update this stupid bracket, because I remember it was an issue last time. Let's, yeah, and I tried to look up another one, but they were like, you have to pay for this. And I was like, I don't have access to the funds to pay for that, so... I don't think I, it's, wrote, I don't think I it's wrote, gonna. I think it's because it's your account and won't let me change it. Well, I just wrote Hawaii in the thing, so we'll right. just have to keep track of them. We'll keep track of them that way. All right. So next is Wisconsin and Rhode Island. Which would you like? All right. I am gonna go with Wisconsin. Let me. Wisconsin. So Wisconsin has the traditional beer brat. So. There is a bath of beer and onions that it gets before getting grilled. Then it's piled high, high with sauerkraut. So, what do you think about that, Sconzi? I mean, that's pretty legit. In Rhode Island, you know, they went with the hot wiener. Not to be fused with hot dogs, hot wieners are much less processed and the buns are slightly sweeter. They're served at, quote, weenie joints across the ocean state where it's best to get them all the way with mustard, meat sauce, onion, and celery salt. I mean, that hot dog sounds amazing, but it doesn't beat the brat. No, it looks good. Like I would, you know, I'd even give the mustard a pass, but yeah. I would eat all I'm three sticking, of them, but I'm still taking the brat with, first. Sticking with Wisconsin. All right, what's all right. next? Uh, Arizona and Indiana. All right, so we're gonna go to Arizona and this is fry bread. Tacos. Ooh. The toppings are less important because the shell of the fry bread is the star. So, basically, we actually have had fry bread tacos on here before for a different thing, but it's basically the fry bread is a different type of uh, pocket for this taco. So, you can choose your toppings and you eat it on this delicious fry bread. All right. Well, in Indiana, we got a pork tenderloin. To me, this is Arizona all day. I mean, pork tenderloin is delicious, but I'm going to go with Arizona. As yeah, well, fry so bread wins. Sure. Fry bread wins. 
All right, Arizona. So what do we got next, Gonzi? All right, Louisiana. All right, um, Louisiana, come on, what are we doing? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, apparently I spelled Louisiana wrong because it's not letting me find it. L O U. There we go. Dem well, I don't even know how to pronounce this, but Muffaletta. Muffaletta. All right. So Muffaletta, it's a sandwich that, hey, what is in this sandwich? It is made with Sicilian style sesame loaf piled with ham salami, mortadella, Swiss cheese, provolone, and marinated olives. Muffaletta. Oh. Muffaletta. All right. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is legit. This is a legit sandwich. The only thing that turns me off is it's very, very bready. There's a lot of bread. That sounds delicious to me. All right, what, what's its competitor? It's going up against the West Virginia pepperoni roll. What? It, it, it's, it's baked roll stuffed with pepperoni. I'm sorry, Mufalada's moving on in my mind. Yeah, like if it was anything that was kind of strong, but no, we got Louisiana. So Louisiana's right. moving on. All right, and then we've got the Bison Burger. Oh, I'm sorry, Wyoming. Be read us the <laughs> Wyoming Buffalo Burger. All right, so Wyoming has a bison burger, which is buffalo meat. It is leaner than beef, and bison burgers are cooked rare to medium rare to keep them from drying out. Onions and herbs are often mixed into the patties to add extra flavor. All right. So what is it competing with? Wyoming is competing with Minnesota, which is the walleye. I'm not reading anymore because I don't like fish all that much. And so I'm choosing the other one. So I'm, I'm honestly disappointed. It says right here, Minnesota has its juicy Lucy, but instead we chose walleye. Yeah. Well, so you chose poorly. They, they definitely chose poorly. West pepperoni is my first disagreement. That's, that's fair. All right. Uh, so then we've got Nevada. Ooh, ooh. Patty melt. Yeah. So the batter has grilled onions and melted Swiss cheese, which sizzle, sizzle, sizzle atop a hamburger patty, and it's traditionally served on rye toast. Ah, I screwed it all up. Oh my God, I screwed it up again. Nevada, okay, there it is, patty melt. Patty melt is legit. But... I mean, the patty, that patty melt be looking like medium. Dude, it, it, looks, <laughs> it looks good. Uh, Emily, welcome in. Your timing is impeccable because we are going to Montana, which is another pork chop. Okay. About 100 years ago, John Berklin started selling pork chop sandwiches out of the back of a wagon in Uptown Butte. Onions, Uptown? pickles, and mustard are the traditional toppings, though some prefer Ooh. cheese, bacon, or egg. I... <sighs> Patty Mouth's getting it for me, man. I gotta go Nevada. Ah, does this have mustard? It does have mustard. Why do you have to have mustard? You don't have to. It just says that's traditional. I'm going the pork chop because I just, I oh. just want to give Chad a, I want to give Chad a chance here. All right, we're what gonna got for me, Chad? we're gonna bring in the chat. We got Old Man Wiggum and Emily. Old Man Wiggum already said he hates pork chops, so. Uh, Oh, great. <laughs> so, Emily, are you going to vote for the uh, the butt of all Montana jokes? Patty Melt. All right. <laughs> Patty Melt okay. wins. So, Patty Melt was which state now? Nevada. I'm keeping tabs as well, so we're good. If you want to oh, look so up Maryland. Good. All right. So, should I stop keeping tabs then? Yeah, I got it. Okay, cool. Cool. All right. So, we are going to look up Maryland, and this is something that we are not going to choose. But Correct. <laughs> it is the... Traditional crab cakes. So, it is soft shell crab on white bread with mayo, lettuce, and local tomatoes. So, so basically, the state of Oregon needs to really, really screw this up. And they might. Oh. Uh, they, they did. <laughs> Oregon, went, Oregon went with the banh mi. Carrot, cucumber, cilantro, and your protein of choice traces its roots ah. all the way back to blah, blah, blah. Comes on a baguette. It's Vietnamese. So, I mean, like, if you get your protein of choice, I'm game. I'm taking this thing. 
I was gonna say they saved it with the protein of choice. Right. Because thought, a lot of people use uh, some sort of some seafood. Sort of yeah. Seafood. Yeah. That saved it for okay. me. So I feel like Oregon is gonna be an easy out in the next round, but let's 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 play this out. Emily says the bond me is so good. All right. I've never had right. one. I'd have to try one out. All oh, right, B, all right, so tell us about Connecticut. We're oh, going to go to Christ. Connecticut where we are dealing with more seafood because it's a clam roll. Fresh clams collected along the Connecticut coast star here. You fry them up for a sandwich with a splash of tartar sauce. I mean, I'd try it, but again, it's not something I'm going to be excited about. All right, so who, so who has to Oh, Jesus that? Christ, this ain't even close. Just fucking dig a hole and bury them and cover it up and carve out the tombstone. Tennessee hot chicken. I know B doesn't like the hot stuff all that much. Oh, that hot chicken, mm -mm, that's good. I'm that's going hot chicken, good. baby. It's got to be Tennessee. Yep, we got to go hot chicken. Yeah. All right. Washington. Fried chicken with cayenne pepper. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. All right, Washington. We are going to watch. We are going to Washington, where God. they have to disclose the uh, salary of the people who are making the smoked salmon. <laughs> yep. So we can probably move on because we're not taking smoked salmon. I mean, we might. We might end up getting something even worse. Well, we're going to Illinois. So if anyone could do it, Illinois uh, though. What do they got? Illinois. Italian beef, hands down, Italian beef. <laughs> yep. Like the Italian, Italian beef, beef is one of the front runners in this competition in my mind. Did I okay. ever tell you that me and old man Wiggum went on a uh, a beef tour, like around Chicago and just ate fucking beef sandwiches, and, like all these different joints. It was very that interesting. That sounds delicious. It was pretty that awesome. Yeah. Uh, Massachusetts, B, what do they got? All right, so Massachusetts probably has some seafood. seafood. <laughs> the, okay, they know. Oh, my God, All what right. the hell is this? We're good to go. We got the Fluffernutter, which is the marshmallow spread of fluff, and it also comes with, what does this come with? I don't even marshmallow know. Like fluff and peanut, peanut butter. Marshmallow fluff and peanut butter on I, white bread. Okay, I, I can get down with it. I suspect Emily would enjoy a fluffer nutter. I don't know why. I just think she does. Okay. So what is it going up against? It is going up against Maine, which it might win because this has got to be seafood. The lobster hey. roll. All right. Fluffer nutter it is. Oh my God. That is so disgusting. No, you don't want, you know, peanut butter and. Well, no, you're not a big but fan I don't want lobster. Butter. I'm not a big peanut butter fan. No. All right. Okay. Iowa B. Iowa. If it's not corn, we riot. Oh my it's god. Not corn. <laughs> it's the main right. The, the main right. So we have someone who decided to steam hamburger meat instead of frying it. He piled the crumbly seasoned pieces onto a bun and offered it to a delivery man who took a bite and, and exclaimed, the sandwich is made right. So is it just meat on a bun? Like ground beef? With it's, basically like a sloppy, it's basically a sloppy joe. But here's part gotcha. of my okay. issue. The sandwich is made right, M-A-D-E, but how do they spell it? M-A-I-D. I'm pretty much turned off just from that alone. I'm just going to throw that out there. But let's see what New Hampshire has for us. Moe's Probably Original. Oh, no. Moe Pagano of Portsmouth decided to buy a sandwich shop and sell only one type of sub. Salami and provolone with onions, peppers, pickles, and olives. I'm done, Mo. You win in my book. Oh, I, these are both good, but I think Mo Mo's got to take it. Yeah, I agree. New Hampshire, I right. agree. Uh, Virginia. Virginia. What the fuck is that? Oh my god! I don't god. know. But we're gonna find out. It's the country ham biscuits. It's a Commonwealth staple. Virginia ham pairs perfectly with buttermilk biscuits and a smear of mustard. Why y'all like mustard so much? Come on, man. Because it's delicious. And it is competing against the salmon salad of Alaska. No. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Virginia wins hand down on that one. 
Bye. Uh, B, take us to South Dakota. This isn't like a bison burger. I'm going to be surprised. What? What? All right. So this is the pheasant salad. So apparently... This is a sandwich where you have chopped pheasant, hard-boiled eggs, and veggies blended together with relish and mayonnaise. I... <laughs> so this is basically like... So some people eat, like, chicken salad sandwiches. This yeah, is basically I think that's what, what this is, is except yeah, it's yeah. pheasant. Got you. Okay. Well, Missouri has the slug burger. Uh, don't let the name deter you. A slug was one slang for a nickel, which is what these burgers originally cost. The patties consist partially or entirely of extenders, such as flour or beans, dating back to a Depression-era need to stretch limited supplies of ground. Fuck that. I'm taking the pheasant burger thing. This That's is Mississippi? Disgusting. This is Missouri. So... Mississippi is the slug burger. Oh, you're right. Shit. Why is Missouri not oh. coming up? So Missouri is burnt in. So this is uh, that's easy. That's just oh, yeah, like Missouri you don't even need. But we'll read you the burn ends just because we like it. But no, if you don't crispy. know what burnt ends are, just move on. You don't deserve to be here. <laughs> Everybody now knows what burnt ends are. Uh, Florida B. Oh fuck! This is another this this one this one's going to the finals, baby. Like I oh, don't know what's beating this one. Cuban, which is ham and cheese sandwich with roast pork, ham, Swiss cheese, pickles, mustard, and sometimes salami. Wait, Emily doesn't know what burn ends are. You're fucking with me, Emily. You know what burn ends are. Uh, Georgia has pimento cheese. No. No, yeah, we're 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 definitely going with that uh, Cuban. Is this pimento? What? Is yeah, this a cheese sandwich? Cheese and mayonnaise. What? And uh, pimento, peppers, cheddar cheese, and mayonnaise. Yeah, no, no, no that's 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 not acceptable. Um, I mean, even for someone from Wisconsin, that's a disappointing sandwich. Emily doesn't know what burnt ends are. Burnt ends are. Uh, well, here, let's just pull it back up and we'll read, we'll read it for All Emily. Right, I got you, Emily. I got you. So the fattier edge pieces of beef brisket are trimmed off until Kansas City cooks realize that they were the tastiest parts. As the name suggests, burn ends get smoked to a crisp. They are then cut into chunks, dribbled with barbecue sauce, and tossed on a brioche bun with pickled red onions. So basically, when you're smoking meat, you get parts that are, especially if they're kind of like the fattier end parts, those parts start to like <laughs> caramelize and get all like burnt and like delicious. Emily responds, holy F. Yes, exactly, Emily. <laughs> exactly. All right, Colorado's got the fool's gold. It's uh, right. peanut butter, blueberry jam, and a pound, yes, a whole pound of bacon. I mean, they say that they had one very famous fan, and it was Elvis. You know, that's my guy. But I don't know, this <laughs> one... You know, I'm not a big peanut butter jelly guy, so I don't know. All right. So what is it going against? Though? Alabama. Ooh. And Alabama's got to come through for us, right? Ooh. Alabama, chicken and white sauce. So this is like kind of like a chicken and white sauce sandwich. So basically, you have a sandwich that's got a barbecue white sauce with mayonnaise and vinegar, and you got chicken that's piled high after being hickory smoked i gotta go with the hickory smoked chicken yep i think bama wins this one all right cool cool the sorry Most fans of colorado uh let's see we're gonna go to delaware yay Delaware probably has more seafood delaware anybody right. get that hey, reference? actually it's no? it's not seafood but it is Thanksgiving on a roll. Ooh, the interesting. Bobby is a festive combination of turkey, cranberry sauce, and stuffing served year round at a deli in Delaware. That that intrigues me a lot. But we're going okay. to North Carolina, and I have a feeling that might blow it out the water. We're gonna see. <laughs> uh, pulled pork with vinegar and pepper. Mm. 
So uh, the Targills assert that their state is the birthplace of barbecue. And they stay true to their original barbecue recipe by basting their pork in a thin vinegar sauce seasoned with red pepper. <laughs> this one's this one's tight. Oh, I'm going to tell you a story. The last time that I was in person with my work people, we had a lunch. And I decided to try something different. It was a cranberry turkey sandwich. I did not like it. Therefore, North Carolina gets my vote. I'm going to go against you, and I'm choosing the Bobby. I, I'm intrigued by the Thanksgiving sandwich. Looks like Wiggs agrees with me. Emily, can you come to B's rescue? We'll give her a second or two to decide what she thinks. And B, if you want... Oh, Emily's with the Thanksgiving. All right, so we are moving on with Delaware. B, take a right, stylo. Wow. Fortunately, all right, so we're going to Idaho. What's with all the peanut butter and jelly? I mean, it's not a potato. Y'all don't got a potato for a sandwich? <laughs> no potato. This is the huckleberry peanut butter and jelly. Well, this is a sandwich draft, Sconzi. Peanut butter and jelly is probably, if we had a draft of iconic sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly would obviously be in the top five, right? But, all right. Wild huckleberries are treated like jewels in Idaho. Their taste is similar to blueberries, but more intense. And their jam is what Idaho people reach for when they assemble their classic peanut butter and jelly. Okay, I can get down with it. Well, it's going against that slug burger that I mentioned earlier, and I'm not voting for that garbage. So I guess what is the deal with the slug burger now? It's, it's just flour and beans. There's like not even meat in it. This is disgusting as hell. <laughs> Don't let the name. So the patties consist of. Hey, B, you've got a you've got a goddaughter, right? Yes. How old is she? Well, I've got one that's ten and one that's six. So let's say you put the ten and the six year old in the kitchen, and you say, "Hey." I want you to make something for dinner, whatever you want, whatever, whatever you want. Just take whatever you want out of the fridge, out of the pantry, out of the freezer. Doesn't matter. Just mix it all up together. We'll microwave it. That's what's for dinner. Whatever they come up with would taste better than this fucking slug burger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am voting for Idaho and the peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Flour or beads? That's kind of amazing. But yeah, we're gonna. Well, I'll, I'll go with you on the huckleberry because the huckleberry <laughs> like, it's is kind gotta of be. interesting. Like, I kind of would want to try that just to see. Like, is this delicious or is this? No, it, no. Delicious? There's nothing that sounds delicious about this at all. All right, uh, last matchup. B, take us to Utah. All right. Well, I am gonna take you oh, to damn. Utah. Oh, oh, all right. Hold on. Please wait. All right, we have the pastrami burger. So the burger joints offer this pastrami burger with melted Swiss cheese and Utah's famous fry sauce, which is a mixture of ketchup and mayo, which is basically campfire mayo. So yeah, enjoy. I'm pretty sure Arkansas is SOL, but we're going to look them up anyway. Or Kansas. Yeah, they're shit of luck. They got the catfish po' boy. I'm definitely taking that pastrami <laughs> burger all day, let's baby. The, let's take the pastrami burger. All right. We are at just after 8 o'clock. Do we want to yeah. save the rest of this for later? We're going to save the rest idea. of this for later. And all I right. believe that there is something that you should be doing on your end while we go to my extra point. Oh, I don't know what that is, so I'm probably in trouble. But why don't you do your extra point? No, B? no, there, 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 there's another Twitch account that you need to be watching. <laughs> oh, shit. Thanks, me. <laughs> you are welcome, sir. So it is my extra point. So there were a couple things that I wanted to think about today, and I'm not sure which one that I wanted to talk about. So I really kind of got, as I talked about in the open here, I've really been very careful in my content curation over the last few weeks to try to make this podcast happier and to not bring a lot of negative topics in here. And there was a topic that I found this week that I thought that was really interesting. There was a um, Reuters Institute poll 
that said that 38% of people globally now avoid the news. And in the UK, that figure is at 46%, which is a rate that has doubled since 2016. And among the reasons for disconnecting, 55% of individuals said that quite simply, the news was bringing them down. So that's something that we've talked about a lot here. And the article really talked about how it's important to report on progress as well as problems to give a fuller and more balanced view of reality. And I thought that that's really important. And that's one that I was thinking about throwing my challenge flag on. But then as I was going on my walk today, I was also listening to a podcast about professional wrestling. And they were talking about the professional wrestler, John Cena. And they were talking about how he has done lots of things in his life. Like he's granted 650 wishes for Make-A-Wish and he's donated his monies to these different charities and things like that. And I was like, that's also something cool to bring up because as much as we're mired in like so much of this negativity, it's really nice to hear about the people who are doing good things. And I think that both Skanzi and I want to be those people who are out there doing good things. So I think it's really important that we are embracing this opportunity to, yes, look at the problems, talk about them, but to also focus on these positivities and these solutions, because I know for me, it makes me feel better when I do. So thumbs up to everybody. Hope you are all doing well. That is my point for you. Even if you have a problem this week, try to find one piece of positivity to counteract that. It's a good message, B. Thank you for that. My, I, my extra point is going to take about 12 seconds, if that. Um, I got some weird stuff going on in my life, and I just want to remind everybody that uh, my video froze again. <laughs> uh, uh, make sure you hold dear those that are close to you in your life. Tell them you love them. Don't let a day go by that you don't. And if there's anybody out there that you haven't recently reached out to and told them you love them, maybe go do that this week, because that's an important thing. That's what I got. It is. Why don't you close those up? I love you, Frozen Sconzi. So <laughs> what we're going to do right now is we are going to tell you where you can find us. If you would like to tell Sconzi that you love him, you can do that by reaching him on Amazon Sidewalk or preferably at Sconzi on Twitter. You can find me, Landmark MKE, on Twitter. You can find me at the zoo looking at the new adorable baby giraffe. Um, you can find the podcast AQ underscore P-R-O-D on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook. You can find Sconzi here on YouTube, on Glimish, wherever Sconzi's are sold. Thank you again, all of you, for viewing and listening and participating in the podcast we greatly appreciate it until we talk to you again have a wonderful week take care of yourselves and be wonderful people bye everybody bye get to watch B dance by himself because I'm frozen I'm frozen 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 scanzi scanzi he's so frozen <laughs> <laughs>